Welcome, everybody, to Predictable Revenue Radio, hosted by Patrick Morrissey. Predictable Revenue Radio is brought to you by Altify, the sales transformation company. Patrick's the chief marketing officer at Altify, responsible for all aspects of marketing, as well as channels and alliances. At Predictable Radio, we believe the only way to unlock sustained growth is to deliver predictable revenue by delivering insights, thought leadership, and best practices on how to improve sales velocity. The man who seems to know it all, Patrick Morrissey. Hey, Patrick. Paul, good morning. How are you? Okay. I'm looking forward to, as always, to find out how do you make revenue predictable? That seems to be an oxymoron here. Well, you would think that, but uh, the good news is we've got a great guest who's really a triple threat. She can talk sales, she can talk strategy, and she can also talk about delivering results. All right, well, let's bring her on. Fantastic. Sonny, good morning. Are you out there? I am. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Thanks so much for your time this morning. I'm pleased to welcome the fabulous and talented Sunny Bliss to the program. She's currently the Director of Strategic Accounts at New Voice Media, the contact center company designed specifically for Salesforce and for the needs of modern customer support. Sunny, I want to get right into it, but uh, before I, I get you to drop a little knowledge, give us a little bit of background on you and introduce us to New Voice Media, please. Yeah, sure. So my background is really quite diverse. I come from a background of technology and non-technology. I worked for a cloud company before we even called it the cloud company back in 99, 98, 99. And now here I am back uh, working for a cloud contact center company, New Voice Media. And the beauty of having so much diverse experience, I think, is that I've been able to narrow down where my strengths are and follow my passion. And my passion is to connect people with people. And so that's why New Voice Media is such a perfect fit because the core of my being is to create good customer experiences and the core of our company is to help our customers through technology and call centers create the best emotive experiences for their customers. So using Salesforce and Omnichannel and different things like that, we are able to achieve that and I love it. Fantastic. And, and you're hitting right on something I want to get into the details on around exceptional customer experience. But maybe the, the qualifying question that set the, sets this conversation up is, why do so many sales experiences and customer experiences suck? <laughs> I just love it. You're just getting right down to it. You know, I think at the end of the day, it's because as salespeople, as account managers, we just don't listen. And when we don't listen, our customers get frustrated. And when they get frustrated, <laughs> sales don't happen. And, you know, revenues don't increase and we don't have that stickiness of customers anymore. And then we just were deflated. The ups and downs, they suck. Um, but it's all stuff that we can change. We can change that through the experiences that we, we create. Well, absolutely. And it comes back to the point that you made around people and connection. So let's rewind the film and, and take it from its most basic elements. When you think about exceptional customer experience, what does that mean to you and, and what's foundational about bringing that to life? Yeah, so it's interesting. The exceptional customer experience is is really not how I define it, but it's how my customers define it. And every customer defines it a little bit differently. Um, more than anything, it's just listening, listening, and listening. It's being empathetic. It's being an advocate, an internal advocate for what our customers want. It's about communicating appropriately and communicating frequently and when they want to hear from us. So it's developing messages and bringing value in ways that the competition isn't or that other vendors are not doing the same for their customers. Yeah, and you're hitting on a couple different things, going back to the, the comment about listening and letting the customer define the experience. A lot of times these conversations go sideways because people don't like being sold to. And the, the approach you're describing really is, is taking a different, a different tact here in terms of trying to get into what's important to the customer. Yeah, that's right. People don't like being sold to. And when they, when, the worst thing you can say is, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not trying to sell you here. I'm just showing you what you need to know. And everything about that sentence is so wrong. When, as salespeople, I think it's easy to um, speak and present 
with selfish intent. I have to get this sale in. I have to make my number. Therefore, they have to buy this now. I know it's better for them than they do. They don't understand. And if you can change your mindset to be actually what's best for the customer, everything else falls into place. That might be just changing the way you message and the way you communicate to not show selfish intent, but to show what they want to hear and how they need to hear it. Yeah, and, and selfish intent gets in the way of a lot of, of conversations, and and really, it really is a blocker to communication. You actually have some background as a teacher and coach and executive coach around presentation. So even stepping away from the customer element for a second, what's what's core in terms of effective communication that sets up the ability to have that dialogue and to be able to get into an active listening mode to, to find out what's important to the customer? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the best training I ever had was my last three years of employment at Decker Communications, where we lived and eat, um, ate and breathed uh, this this awesome customer experience through good communication. And just trying to, um, I think the biggest thing is being authentic, taking accountability and positioning, positioning everything for the customer or for the appropriate audience. As account managers or salespeople, we have to be able to influence our own companies internally to advocate for customers. We need to influence up. We need to influence down. We need to influence into our customers. Sometimes we need to influence channel partners. And it's the best way to influence is not by saying, you need to do this or complaining or whatever it needs to be. You have to understand who you're talking to and how they need to hear what you have to say so that you can move something forward and hitting your numbers. Exactly, and everybody wants to hit their numbers. So if I'm authentic, if I'm accountable, if I'm active listening, then and I'm having a dialogue with the customer, then how should I think about you know the notion of, of executing a sale? What's critical to, to making and, and enabling the entire team to, to get in that mindset to help you serve the customer? Well, there, that's it. So the thing that glues it all together is just this idea of a sales methodology, of having a common platform for conversation and conversation to move the sales process forward, not to point fingers and say, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't. And I've been using uh, the Altify uh, sales methodology since 99 before it was called Altify. And I live and I die and I breathe by it. And it's this idea of you've got to know what you don't know and don't be complacent uh, with what feels really good. We like to stick with people that make us feel good, who say the right things, to go, yeah, you're the best person. This is great. I love this idea. But loving an idea and having an opportunity and having an opportunity that are going to close are three very, very different things. And I've learned that if there isn't a compelling event, it's never going to close. Um, so. Here at New Voice Media, uh, our sales team uses that methodology, and it really helps us to collaborate on deals and to get them to move forward, to get comfortable with the uncomfortable for the greater good of the company. Yeah, and you hit on two things there that I want to actually uh, double back on for a second. The first thing is the notion of a compelling event. There is this school of thought, both on the sales side and on the buying side, that the compelling event is actually, I'm going to make you a deal at the end of the quarter. Talk to me about what's what's the actual definition of a compelling event. <laughs> A compelling event is what happens if you don't make a certain date um, and what happens to the customer, what happens to their organization, and what's in it for that person. I remember last January and somebody had said, yeah, we want to get this done in January. That's the end of your fiscal year, right? And I said, well, it is the end of my fiscal year, but you have an entire process that you have to go through. And quite frankly, I don't think if I said it was free, you could get it done by January. And they looked at me and they're like, yeah, actually, you're right. It's not going to be January. It's going to be April. <laughs> Thank you. Then we don't have to be talking about this every day in January anymore. And it was really nice to get that off of the table. There's nothing was going to happen January 1st if they didn't sign on and buy the greatest software. It, just, it, was, just a, it was just a day in time. 
Absolutely. And it, it also points back to the, the what you've just hit on again, which is getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. Sometimes it's very easy for the, the sales team or even the sales leader to get lost in the story of the deal and bypass what's really going on and what, what the customer is actually telling you and maybe more importantly, what they're not telling you. How do you right. how do you enable an environment to get comfortable with that ambiguity or with the things that you don't know or the or where you're not well positioned? Well, I think it comes back to this idea of having a methodology that everybody can follow and look at. And when you when you take the Altify map and you're able to start talking about the connections and the people who are involved and maybe the people who are in the outer circle, um, people that we don't talk to all the time, the, the CIO, what do they have to think, and who really matters, and using that across the sales team to have a really constructive conversation. I don't think there's anything better than when I stand up there and God knows not my deals are not 100% perfect 100% of the time. I say, you know, here's who, here's who I'm working with and here's what they're saying. Something doesn't quite seem right. And maybe somebody who started yesterday at my company can say, well, what about this person? Did you talk to them? Well, I haven't. Do you have any suggestions on how I can reach out to them? And now you have a meeting of the minds with the team who all understands the same language and can work together. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all a team trying to do the best for our company. So there is none of this living in a vacuum. That's a terrible idea. It's about getting as many people involved at the right time uh, to, to make the right connections, again, to help the customer experience. And when the customer feels like they've been heard, they are empowered, and they have all of the information, things are just easier. Absolutely, they are. So uh, let's pause here for a quick second to pay the bills, and then I want to pick up this, this thread about the customer experience. <laughs> Sounds good. You're only successful as your customers, and that demands the need for an exceptional sales execution, revenue retention, and customer success. The challenge for most sales leaders and their teams, however, is that their sales process just doesn't match how their customers buy. Sustained growth isn't possible because the revenue team isn't aligned with customers and prospects. With Altify's sales transformation solutions, companies can deliver predictable revenue growth. Yes, we said predictable revenue growth. They can also acquire and retain customers, and they can collaborate across the revenue team to qualify and win new business while delivering value that unlocks cross-sell and upsell opportunities. Built natively on the Salesforce platform, Altify helps salespeople, managers, and executives achieve sustained revenue growth. They help accelerate sales performance for Autodesk, Comcast, GE, Honeywell, Salesforce, Tableau, and United Healthcare. They can do the same for you. Visit Altify.com, just like it sounds, A-L-T-I-F-Y, Altify.com. All right, back to our show with Patrick. Thanks, Paul. And we're here with Sonny Bliss, the Director of Strategic Accounts for New Voice Media, the contact center designed for Salesforce. And anybody who's anybody in sales is using Salesforce. And I want to talk to uh, a comment that you made as we were, were going into the break there, Sonny, about um, the notion of team. Describe to me what, what a team um, looks like when you think about being focused on the customer and what are, the, what are the capabilities that are required and the behaviors required of the team to actually get into that great experience that all customers want? Yeah, that's a great question. The team, as far as I'm concerned, my entire company is the team. Every experience that my customer has, from me to an SC, to a customer success manager, to our support team, to somebody in marketing, billing, um, you name it, is reflects the company. And so getting everybody on board with the mindset that it's about the customer. I realize we all have goals we need to make, but if we think about the customer first and what they need to be successful, we will hit our goals, we'll make our goals, and we'll all be successful. One of the best things uh, that happened at Dreamforce, it's our biggest event of the year as well, and we host several different panel discussions, but the marketing marketing team was looking for uh, panel leaders, or panel um, people to sit on the panel, and I have a slew of customers with amazing, amazing customer stories, and they just needed to get out there. And when they do get out there, 
they're getting their own recognition and advertising for their company. And so that makes them feel good. It makes their company feel good. It's recognizing the effort of their teams, you know, at the at the customer that they've done a good job. And it's so great that other people want to hear about it. And then internally, marketing has found their panelists. We found people to help us with case studies. Um, we're getting executives to meet with these people to feel closer to our company and to have stronger partnerships. So it's just, it's a win, win, win. And when I sat there and looked up on stage and there are three panelists and there were all three of my customers, I just got so happy. <laughs> it was a happy, it was a happy account manager moment. And, and those are the best kind of moments, um, particularly from a, from a sales perspective. When you're telling the story in the voice of the customer, then you're having the, you know, you often, oftentimes can unlock some magic there. And you also, sure. you know, touching on something, I want to go back to your, your background as a, not just as a sales professional, but as a, you know, presentation coach. When you think about um, being able to articulate, um, whether it's on stage in a, in a customer panel or it's in a sales presentation with senior executives, what's your short list? Uh, what should be my swing thoughts of what's most important to keep in mind to make sure I'm communicating effectively about the value we're, we want to bring to this customer? The most important thing is making it about them and not about you. Don't use words like, I think, I want. Don't use stupid jargon, increasing revenue, decreasing costs. I mean, it's just everybody hears that all the time. You have to be different. You have to tell stories. You have to tell stories that are relevant, and you have to make it 100% about them. Not, I think that this is a good idea because, no, it's critical to your business that blah, 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 blah. And if you're talking in a way that people say, tell me more about that, then you've hit on exactly what you need to hit on. And, and what do you think is the biggest blocker to that in, in actual day-to-day -day selling, much less thinking about strategically managing an account? Because everyone wants to tell the story. Everyone wants to be, you know, have, a, have that relationship with the customer. But so many times, and actually we've done some research on this, the net of which is 60, 60 plus percent of the time, meetings don't go past the first um, sales interaction because you know, there's no value there. What's, what's the big blocker right. there? I think as salespeople, we're so excited that somebody wants to talk to us that we just want to throw up information <laughs> to them as soon as possible. And the information that we're most comfortable throwing up is, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? This is what we do. This is how awesome we are. Us, 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 us. When it's really, well, let's take a step back. <laughs> what made you take this meeting today? What was interesting about what we said that that made you want to hear more. Let's start with that. Let's just have a conversation about you and what you do for the company and what your company is trying to achieve. And there may or may not be a fit for our technology. And it's really not about that. But if we can help you be successful, I'd like to try. Completely changes the conversation. It absolutely does. And, and one of the things that's implicit in the comments that you just made is there's a couple of assumptions there that even as a, as a salesperson or as a sales leader, we know how to run an effective meeting, you know, starting with right. double clicking on the agenda. And are we having the right conversation? And is everybody clear about what this meeting is about? And, and let me explain what the, what I think the agenda is and what I think the outcome um, needs to be from your perspective. Right. Yeah. I think, I think, I think it's me. It's about me. I want this to be, actually, I want this to be the outcome. That's selfish intention. What do you need the outcome to be? You walking away from this meeting, you need to identify X so that we can do Y, which will take you to meet whatever goal or objective or whatever it is. So you are prepared for your meeting with your boss. We need to get this information whatever that might look like. But it's not about me. It's about them. It's about helping them be successful and getting them what they need. But it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to make it about them. It's really easy to use a whole bunch of words about I, me, we, I am amazing. I'm an expert. We're the expert. We're the leader. Who cares? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It, it, what matters is what, what matters to them. Absolutely. And that also, there's an implication there that that means as a sales professional, I've got to do my homework to show up to that meeting and show well. Yeah, absolutely. No question about it. And, and, and part and, of that and, homework. <laughs> oh, go ahead. 
No, I, I think the uh, the implication there, and and there's a lot of research, there's a lot of time, there's a lot of uh, intellect that needs to be applied across the team to be able to bring value to those conversations and to really make it about them in a way that's believable. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And the the homework that you, this is one of the the key takeaways from the coaching that I did at my last company in, in talking with sales teams all the time on their presentations, if this is your one opportunity to be in front of the customer, why are you using a deck that's been used with a million people where you just change the name of, on the first slide of the deck to their name with their logo? Is that even applicable? Maybe parts of it. Maybe it can be. Who's going to be in the room? What do they know about us? What do they not like about us? And that's where this methodology comes back into place is that you can look at that map and go, what do we need to know about the people that are going to be here? And before I show up in that meeting, I'm going to do some due diligence with the people that called the meeting to find out more about these people. Julie, I want you to be successful and, and be a rock star for bringing us in. I know Joe is going to be in this meeting. How does he feel about this process? I mean, he is the head of you know, the call center, and we are talking about doing something that is going to change the way he does business, and he's not really running the show here. Tell me about that, and you'll get more information. And those little gleams of wisdom or nuggets, golden nuggets, you can bring into a presentation all day long, and then you make your people look like heroes, the ones that were helping you gather the information. And just by default, you'll be able to neutralize people that maybe weren't neutralized. You'll get access to people maybe that you didn't have access to before because you made it about them and something that they cared about. It takes homework and it takes time. You can't do it five minutes before the meeting. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And I would love to have a follow-up with you just talking about uh, the art of the presentation. But the last question, because uh, I'm, I'm cautious of your time and want to get you back out talking to customers, is who's the best sales leader you ever worked for or worked with and why? I think the best is the one I'm working for right now. Um, Olivia Gachot is our chief sales officer. He is very seasoned. He's been at lots of different companies. He's worked with lots of different types of people. And I think what's great about him is that he's installed this, instilled this idea that we are our own CEOs and we can make decisions we can make decisions. We can help bring in the right people to make decisions about how we want to work with customers. But how can he support us doing that? And if our mindset is in what's best for the customer, the decision's going to be fine. It's totally going to be fine. He doesn't have to micromanage us because of the methodology he's put in place. We're all speaking the same language. And when I say I'm going to commit something because I have a compelling event, he knows it's going to close. I've missed my commit once in five years. It's really exciting. <laughs> but it's because you just don't commit something. for You just can't until all of these pieces are in place. And when you have the trust of your sales leader, he looks at it at, from an umbrella perspective and how can I help? What resources do you need? But I know you're going to get the job done. And so that feels really good. He's, really, he's a positive motivator. Uh, he's put in some great processes. And he, he gets he gets the job done. It's really nice. Fantastic. Uh, that and when everyone's in the customer mindset, speaking the same language, I think that the punchline you hit it right on the head, Sonny, which is you know five years of making your commit every time, and that's part of the magic of sales, and that's what happens with great customer experiences. Thank you so much for your time today, and I'll let you, you get bet. back out and get in front of customers. Have a fantastic All day. All right. Th thanks so much, Pat. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> You've been listening to Predictable Revenue Radio with host Pat Morrissey on the Funnel Radio Channel. For at work listeners like you, 